Well, happy Monday, everybody. It seems the freeze is going to go away and, uh, well, things are heating up. The weather yeah. and action. We've got hockey action. We have basketball action. Girls and boys, we're covering the state border to border. We're so glad you tuned in. He's Mark Robbins. I'm Noah Fins. This is CT Sports Now on Vantage Sports Net, where it's what? It's all Connecticut sports all the time. That's right. And we, uh, you know, it's so nice. The kids get back to school and they go right back into their extracurricular activities as well. They're back on the court and uh, really going hard at it. And uh, here we go. What, one of the big stories developing, Mark, is what's going on up in Hartford with Weaver basketball, one of the perennial towers in the state, right? Yeah, I mean, Reggie Hatchett, year in and year out, has this team, if not winning a state title, certainly fighting for it. Every now and then, you get a year in which things just aren't going your way, bunch of new players, takes time to build continuity and cohesiveness and get them experience. Thus, the Beavers going to Capitol Prep for of a road game and trying to get their first victory of the season. That's right. The Beavers are anxious. They're a bunch of eager Beavers to get into the win column, you might say. Capital Prep, of course, prepared are the Blazers and ready to go. And early in this one, Jeremiah Taylor, a little power dribble drive, and the floater goes. Capital Prep jumping out to a four-point lead. To Kai Blizzard. I mean, this kid ought to be flourishing this time of year, right? How about a little blow by along the baseline? And Weaver has tied things up. Later on, big Tyler Oney will miss, but follow your shot, young players, as Tyler does, gets the offensive rebound and the putback. Oney just taking up space inside. Another offensive rebound, and again, off the glass, Oney. And the Blazers getting out to the lead, but here comes Angel De Jesus with the steal. And the Beavers right back in this one. A pretty tight game throughout. Capital Prep, though, at home, going to keep the Beavers winless. So, Capital Prep gets the victory. They do it 86-79 as we hit the scoreboard. 86-79, so Weaver still winless, Weaver. They'll take on Ledger Saturday, Capital Prep at home for University. That'll be a Friday night game, Noah. All right, another team that's a little down this season picks up another loss tonight. We're talking about Fairfield Prep taking a trip to Wallingford to take on Sheehan. Chris Jackson driving, kicking it out to Garrett Mal Malampi, who knocks down the three-pointer. Fairfield Prep trying to get back in it. Avery Brown drives. Misses, but hey, he's there to get his own. What did you say about following your shot? There he does. Puts it back up and in. It's a close game at this point. But then the Titans doing some work. Get it down low to Mark Amodio. Cutting to the basket. Nice little move there to get the ball up and in. Sheen up by 10 at this point. Looking for more. Malampi taking a shot. Missing. But what do we say, Mark? Follow your Follow own shot. shot. Yeah, that's what he does. Puts it back up and in. Sheehan now starting to run away with a little bit. Austin Lee hands it to Malapi. Uh, he misses the shot, but this time it's his buddy Lee cleaning it up, and he lays it in. So it was all about offensive rebounding for Sheehan tonight in the 71-63 victory. So Fairfield Prep uh, advances now to play Guilford next, where they'll try to pick up just their second win or third win of the season. Uh, Sheehan with a nice victory here over what is typically one of the top teams in the state when it comes to basketball. Well, talking about top teams, you get the top 10 poll that comes out and newly in the top 10, despite a record of only three and two, would be the Falcons of Xavier hosting Cheshire. And Xavier looking for its third straight victory. Yeah, Mike Coes has the Falcons flying around and playing really well since the holiday break. The miss here by Xavier and Eric Angelo and the Rams trying to push the pace and get back into this one. The layup is good. Cheshire then trying to play a little defense, but when you push the pace, you got to be prepared to face it the other way. And Matt by Linda and the guys doing a number in this one. How about Zach Stroh? Stroll with the bucket there. That's actually, that's by Linda. He had 15 in this one. Stroll and Xavier up big at the break, and they go on to the victory. Stroll inside there. How about 47-24? Xavier has won three in a row. They have knocked off 
Z uh, Notre Dame of West Haven, Hill House, and now they've knocked off Cheshire. Yeah, that'll get you into the top 10, even with just those three losses or now four losses, but coming off or wins, of, or wins yes. rather, yes. Um, but how about that? A nice, uh, nice little Very role impressive. for Xavier. Start, yeah. Starting to play well. Yes. A roll. All right, let's, uh, let's check in on another one of those teams in the top 10, talking about Hamden, one of the top five teams in the state, ranked, uh, I think, number four now, right, in the newly released poll. Hamden taking on Daniel Hand, so a good old-fashioned SCC showdown uh, here. And Hamden going to work. Victor Rosario, just great shooter. He had 23 points tonight. There's three of them right there. Then Green Dragons in transition. Jalen Ricks, uh, he can... He can loft it as well. He knocks it down from the other side. Daniel Hand trying to stay in this one. Flynn Driscoll getting to the baseline where he's able to pull up and knock down. But Hamden able to pull away. Jalen Ricks, who was the leading scorer of all scorers tonight with 25. He gets inside here with a nice lay-in. And Hamden goes on to win it to stay undefeated on the season. Hamden with the victory over Daniel Hand. 70 to 56, Mark, is your final score. Unbeaten Amity taking on the uh, Green Knights of Notre Dame of West Haven, and there may be the most prolific scorer in the state, Tyler Thomas. And Tyler, proving me right, drilling a three. That's 1,000 career points for the Spartan senior, and he nearly had 1,000 in this game. But Notre Dame of West Haven playing some defense here off the steal. Connor Rains, yeah, and when it rains, yeah, it pours. As Notre Dame has the lead right here, but then Thomas. I said he's a prolific scorer, same spot, another three. He was going to put on quite a show in front of the hometown Amity Army. Fourth quarter now. Reigns. A power move. The bucket and one. Notre Dame ties the game at 51. Amity's defense. It's Thomas. After they get the steal, they get it to who else? Guy that was going to score 47 How many? in this one. 47 oh. Oh, points. Wow. He only wears number 43. He ought to change his number. But Notre Dame, with Reigns again inside, gets the lead up to five. And somehow, the Green Knights hang on, despite the 47 from Tyler Thomas. Amity falls for the first time all season. They lose it. 78-77. Wow. Notre Dame's Green Knights get the victory. Wow, what a game, 47. Thomas. Boy, Thomas is some player. And you remember uh, Jim Calhoun had been recruiting him. Jim Calhoun over now for St. Joseph recruiting him. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, or, 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 or so we think. He was, he was at an Amity well, game to checking check him out. <laughs> of course. Wanted to check him Watch some basketball, as he says. All right, let's check in on a CCC showdown between a very hot Southington team taking on a Hall team. So... Go ahead, fellas, take the court, say hello, get yourselves ready, and then let's play some ball, huh? Southington's Ryan uh, Gensaldo. Going to get the ball and take it in early at some point in this game. I mean, look at, look at this. I mean, enough, guys. Let's play some ball already. Everyone's got their introduction. Here we go. Here's Gensaldo driving it in. Blue Knights with the early lead in this one, but Southington's Gonna look to add to it. Cameron Kleins will miss his shot, but fights for the rebound. And it's actually his buddy, Andrew Lonis, who gets it and finishes it off. Lonis, again, this time, gonna end up with the ball up. Get it underneath. Nice little reverse move here. And Southington has a 17-12 lead. But hold on, Paul's Jane, James. DeCrescentis makes the corner jumper. We got a tight ball game. It's a one-point game at this point. Wait, but come back. Yeah. <laughs> Gensaldo will knock down the three right before the halftime buzzer to bring the deficit to only one. 25-24, Hall leading at halftime, but Southington uses that momentum to go on in the second half and win it by the final score of 61-46. Southington, by the way, now has improved to 4-2 and two and will take on Connor next. You know what? The new digs at uh, Platt High School, the new lair for the Panthers. It's, that's where they have a lair, right? Panthers? Do the Panthers have a lair? I think so. I don't know. They, I, I, whatever it is, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be caught. Anyway, Platt, uh, the new gym looking very nice as they hosted the Blue Dragons in Middletown and Desmond Davis up the feed from Elijah Felton. 
Uh, they are the running Panthers early, but Middletown responding. De'Aaron Lawrence drilling a three. And then a little defense by the Dragons. Tejan Lenser with the steal. Khalil Thomas getting the two points off the finish. Panthers in transition. Justin Radford. Hello. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. How about you want, uh, want to see some scoring from the Blue Dragons? Lawrence again, another three. Silky smooth indeed. And Middletown goes on to a rather uh, emphatic victory. How about winning by 50? 96, wow. 46, Middletown. Middletown, they're always fun to watch here. It doesn't matter who they've lost the, the previous year. Group. Always a talented group. We're going to take a break, but we have plenty more basketball to come. We're going to check out East Haven, uh, a, a, an always fun uh, girls basketball team to, to watch. We're going to get out into Fairfield County as well. Plus, we're going to get into hockey action, boys and girls, on the other side of this commercial break. We'll be right back here on CT Sports Now. All right, welcome back. CT Sports Now here on Vantage Sports Net. If we were in the South, They'd be saying, we are dad gum awesome. <laughs> All right, well, we could say we, it here, too. Could, yeah, I say y'all every now and then because it works. So sure, dad sure gum thing. awesome. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, let's say hey, we're fixing to get to some more highlights ah, here. Yes, we'll keep the southern, th the southern things working. Why, why, why not just keep going with it? All right, how about another uh, SCC uh, matchup here? We have Jonathan Law and East Haven. This game played... In Milford, what a game. This game had to be decided in overtime. Back and forth with oh, both teams doing great work. Deontay Eddy sets up Connor Crean here. Law up 18-16 after the first quarter. Moving to the second now. Eddy Papalizio knocks it down. How about this? 29 points for the game. Papalizio popping from all over the place. Coming back the other way. Connor Crean fakes the shot not once, twice. Well, eventually finding Carl Maxwell, who's going to make the jumper. Boy, this thing just kept going back and forth here on the fast break. Gabe Longley swats the ball away. It would be 44-41. Jonathan Law after the third quarter. You get the idea. Very close. Ryan Spano to Tristan Punzo. He hits the corner three. It's tied at 59. We're going to overtime. And that's where Papalizio was just tremendous in the overtime period. In fact, a key factor for East Haven, they made 12 of 14 free throws to win the game, 73-65 in OT. East Haven now 5-2. and two. You make 12 of 14 from the charity stripe. You're doing good work. You deserve to win the ball game. From uh, the SEC, we're going to have conference basketball uh, matchup from the FCAC. And to do that, we want to bring in our executive sports producer, also one of our executive contributors, if you will, Franco Macheo, a uh, grad student here at Sacred Heart University. What's up in the FCAC, Franco? Well, it seems like the FCAC was still celebrating New Year's because they had the fireworks going on offense, both teams. <laughs> we had Fairfield Ward, who was hosting Staples in boys basketball. Both teams looking to get over 500 in this early uh, boys basketball season. We got the handshakes, oh, a little Robin Hood action, and it would be the Mustangs that would strike first. This is Christopher Bogan. He sets the pick and gets rewarded with the layup, but the records... They're going to respond by turning on the burners. First on defense, here's Ben Pearl getting the steal, who finds A.J. Constant ahead, finish with the, finishes with the layup, and then look at this, Wreckers aerial attack. Boom and boom. That's easy as one, two, and three. A.J. Constant again, but from this point on, the Mustangs will respond. Look at this pretty alley-oop. Uh, and he finishes there off the glass. That is Christopher Bogan and Sean Conway. No one told me Hakeem Olajuwon was going to be in the building in Fairfield. <laughs> the beautiful dream shake. And that propels the Mustangs to a 74-58 high-scoring win. And they actually improve to 2-1. So it's early season. They have actually haven't played that many games early on. But they get, they get over that 500 hump. And they, would, they actually move on to face Wilton tomorrow. So they look on to continue their winning ways. But for today, it was a great night of FCAC basketball. However, I feel like we have some girls basketball as well on the slate coming up, right? Well, you would know. Yeah, yeah right? I mean. You're the guy who put together the rundown. So, yes, indeed, <laughs> we, we do. Well done with, uh, with uh, the FCAC game. But, yeah, we have plenty of girls basketball yeah. to get to as well. And we have a, a, a matchup that we had in boys just a few minutes ago. 
Platt hosted Middletown in boys basketball, so uh, the ladies had to find a place to play, so that's why they go to Middletown High. The Panthers on the prowl early in this one, but Middletown looking for a third straight victory. Mackenzie Dunn. Dunn hit a three right there in the corner and puts the Blue Dragons up early. Julie, Julia Meisner, little running hook to bring the Panthers uh, an early first half lead. After that, Martha Chapman over the defender, gets the kind bounce, and Platt has the lead. A very tight game throughout, and this one finishing off with a Platt victory. A road win in the boys for Middletown, and a road win on the girls' side as well, as Platt gets a three-point win, 60 57, your final, Noah. Well, the Hamden girls also playing tonight. Not the same kind of game where they're playing the same opponent as the, uh, the boys did. Nope. Hamden taking on East Haven. This East Haven team is really good, and everyone's excited yeah. to be there watching this game in, in Staven. Alexis Penzwater gets the ball in the corner, knocks down the three-pointer. East Haven at this point up 62-39. We're in the fourth quarter. Hamden trying to stay in it. Tanaya Thompson lays it up and in, plus she gets fouled the old-fashioned three-point play. But it's East Haven, just too tough. Here they are in transition and getting it to the captain. Marley Hurd drives it straight to the bucket, lays it up. Mackenzie Holmes will then fake the pass, and you'll see her laying it up. What a move, huh? All right, so East Haven wins at 73-54. This is East Haven's ninth win of the season already. East Haven now 9-1. and one. Their only loss having come to, to New London. They'll go for win number 10 Wednesday at Bassick in Bridgeport. Two more teams from the Southern Connecticut Conference. This one played at Cheshire. Sheehan, the Titans on the road to take on the Rams in, of course, Ram land. Fourth quarter of a tight game. In fact, Cheshire up one. Seven to go. Liv Robles with the offensive rebound and the putback. And Sheehan now has a slight lead. And then after that, Lexi Ocasio inside. Carolyn Beal with a big three. She had nine all in the second half. And that big three put the Titans up by six. Cheshire hanging in. Sarah Mulligan. She didn't need one on that shot. <laughs> she it. hit the three. <laughs> Made it a three-point game, 40-37. to 37. Robles again working down low. Big bucket to give Sheehan a little bit of comfort room. Sheehan hitting free throws late, and the Titans kind of pull away and get the victory. An eight-point win for the visitors. Sheehan, 48. Cheshire. 40. That's Let, your final. Let's head to the Southwest Conference. A couple conference foes going at it. Weston and Benell. This game being played in Stratford. Weston at this point when we pick up action with a six-point lead until that. Georgia Burbaco gets the rebound and gets it to go. But Benell coming right back. Jasmine St. Clair getting the rebound and the putback. But Katie Ositice. Well, nice lay in here to keep Weston out in front. It's 34-26 at this point. And then Bridget Avgus. How about that? The lay-in uh, to go there, steals the ball from Weston and drives it in. Weston's Ositice, well, she was pretty big in this game. She gets another lay-in coming up, and Weston goes on to win the game. Go ahead, Katie, take it all the way to the basket, would you? Or not. 57-41 <laughs> is your final will. score. The Trojans just keep rolling along. So do we here on CT Sports Now. We're going to take a quick break but we will continue to roll right through and when we come back we won't roll we will do a lot of skating some high of the, school hockey some of the top teams in in the state playing monday night tonight and we'll have the action when we come back here on ct sports now we kept our word we're back as quickly as possible it's here at ct sports now as we move on and we're keeping our word again with more Hockey highlights. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's get down Fairfield County way. Greenwich. Some people think Greenwich is, uh, if not the best team, certainly among the top three. At least that's where they're ranked. At the Dorothy Hamill Ice Rink, taking on the Norwalk McMahon Group. Uh, Greenwich all over the Bears in this one. Nikita Kovalev. Give him a crease. He takes a goal. It's, it's Alexis quickly. Kidman. It's one nothing. He's pretty good. Two nothing when Alex Mosion spins, shoots, 
and just like that, it's a 2 nothing Cardinal lead. They're going to make it 3 nothing before the end of the first uh, period. Matt Bogger shoots, gets it right back. He spins, he scores. Cardinals have a lot of guys who can score, and they did plenty of that tonight, winning 9 nothing. Separating it nice and even. Big Red now 5-0 and oh on the season after the 9-0 win. We'll play Darien on Saturday. Norwalk gets Staples. All right, State Pride on the line for the Falcons of Xavier. Why? Well, they're hosting Smithfield, Rhode Island, and I'm telling you what, the Falcons with all kinds of pressure in the first period. Several opportunities. One just better than the last. But so difficult to get a goal. How about Aiden Hotchkiss right here in the slot? He thinks he has it right. It didn't go in. Hit the post. No goal until the second period. That's when Xavier got a couple of them. One more in the third. And yes, the Falcons come up with a victory. A 3-1 win. Connecticut beats Rhode Island. Or at least Xavier over Smithfield. That's your final. That's three straight wins, by the way, for Xavier, they'll play Connard on Wednesday. That's a big, big night for Xavier. All right, let's get back to FCI hockey. Stanford West Hill at New Cane. And this one all about defense early. That's Dylan Shane making the stop on what appeared to be a breakaway. Rams with a stop. John uh, Cavaris, great play coming up here, uh, rather stopping the Rams. Or how about this? Stanford down a man, a chance for a shorthanded goal. And there's Shane again with the big stop. Stanford West Hill, one goal in the first off the face off. Jason Marchese, did you see that? The puck kind of bounced up, went in. But in the end, it was a 4-2 New Canaan victory over the Stanford combination of Stanford High plus West Hill. Gets this, it's 21 straight wins for the Rams now over either Stanford, West Hill, or the combination of the two. Rams get first victory of the season. All right, we go from the boys at New Canaan to the girls of New Canaan in an absolute doozy of a game against Simsbury. This was all about whether New Canaan could maintain a lead. They were up 1-0 at the end of the first period. They start the second with Courtney O'Connell poking one in. to 2-0 lead, but they, they can't maintain that lead. Stephanie Rurka redirects a shot here for Simsbury. Oh, it's a 2-1 game, and it's quickly going to be tied up soon thereafter. It's Grace Melanson. She's from a tough angle here and still... You'll see her coming up on the left side of your screen. She's still able to score, and so it's 2-2. Two to two. On to the third period where the Rams are able to retake the lead. Brooke Dean is able to redirect a shot coming up here, and so New Canaan at that point is up 3-2. to two. But can they maintain the lead? The answer, no! Kate Whirl down the boards here for Simsbury. The wrister ties it, and we're going to overtime. Now in overtime, you don't have to maintain a lead. You just have to get one. And that was good for, for New Canaan. Kelly Benson comes away with the winner coming up right here. She's able to poke it in. And there you have it. New Canaan wins it four to three in overtime. That was a good hockey game. Fun stuff. A lot of excitement. 4-3. We're going to take a break, but we have some college basketball news, including something on UConn basketball when we return. Welcome back, CT Sports Now. We've gone through high school action from all over the state, but we have some college news as well. Yeah, UConn suspending junior forward Eric Cobb, the 6'9 junior uh, forward, suspended for conduct detrimental to the, to the team as if and they the don't program. have enough problems now, right? Uh, and that uh, the suspension is indefinite, averaging about two points and three and a half rebounds a game. No suspension, just accolades for former Waterbury Sacred Heart star Mustafa Herod playing at Auburn this week, the SEC Player of the Week. Couple of big wins for the Auburn Tigers. They get back into the top 25 as uh, Heron leads them to couple of wins, including one over 23rd ranked Tennessee. Well, Mustafa Heron is one, really one of the top players in that conference, one of the top players in the country right now. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for us. Uh, he's Noah, I'm Mark. Until next time, enjoy Connecticut, everybody.